everybody. Well, I'm glad to say I'm feeling loads better. Um, just for some of you that don't know, I have recovered from my cold. Still got a little bit of a cough, but it's more or less over and my knee is healing brilliantly. It's a little bit achy at times, but you know, I suppose it's my age. So yeah, brilliant. So thank you for all the well wishes and all the messages that I got about that. I am now looking to locate my notebook, which is about somewhere. So yes, here I have my trusty notebook because I've been asked some questions. Um, in my last video, I decided to suggest, as well as kind of tell you what I've been up to, which hasn't been a lot, but just to kind of update you on what's going on. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got some questions for you and thank you to the bin men who are now outside. They always pick their times, they really do. So, questions. First questions are from Lady Lecter. Hiya. The first question is, what is the first gig you ever went to? Now, I have a bit of a confession to make because I'm a child of the 80s. So I grew up in the 80s and I was kind of, in my teens, I kind of wanted to fit in with everybody a little bit more than I kind of do now. So back then I was at school and there were various people who were playing at a local venue called the Victoria Hall which is in Hanley Stoke-on-Trent and it's a place where lots and lots and lots of people have played over the years and it was one of the venues to play apparently has the third best acoustics in the country and therefore is you know a really good place to play so my first gig, see I'm, I'm beating around the bush a little bit aren't I? First gig I ever went to, proper gig like that by going to the Victoria Hall, was Nick Kershaw. I went because my best friend Julie really 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 was into him in a very big way and I went along with it. I wanted to go and see bands like The Smiths and Susie and the Banshees and all those kind of bands but was didn't really know anybody that was into that sort of stuff well I say that there was quite a few of us who were kind of into it but not to, to kind of like to not not to a large degree so I kind of missed out on seeing a lot of those goth bands when I was younger I did catch up later in the 90s but you know back in the 80s I was a bit trying to fit in a little bit. So yes, my first gig was Nick Kershaw. They were supported by a band called Balloise Sum. Some of you may have heard of those. And we were sitting up in the gods, which is uh, the top tier of the Victoria Hall. We, uh, it was actually quite a good gig. Um, the lead singer from Balloise Sum was a little bit up himself and was, um, really quite shirty with the audience which wasn't really fair because you know he was on with the sports act and Nick Kershaw played a blinding set. The second band that I went to see though was Tears for Fears who were are still one of my favourite bands from that time and I saw them on the Songs from the Big Chair tour so yeah my second one is the one that I own up to the most. The first one is one that I kind of cringe a little bit about but you know it was the 80s what can I say. So yeah that was my first gig. I have been to other gigs now this is really really strange because as a kid growing up we had a venue by, by I say by us but actually quite close to us that was called Jollies and during the sort of 70s, 60s and 70s, it was the place to go to see cabaret acts. Proper cabaret acts though, not, you know, you know, people like Shirley Bassey played there and Cliff Richard and so many sort of big celebrities played there. So as a child, I went to see bands like the Grumbleweeds, which were a Midlands bass band, Freddie and the Dreamers, Tommy Steele, um, 
a few other kind of 60s bands, a lot of whom I kind of can't remember really, but people like Brotherhood of Man played there and, and that. So, so growing up, I was used to going to see live entertainment and the beauty of going somewhere like Jolly's is it was it was it, it was a beautiful kind of club at the time it was it was all set out beautifully and you you sat at a table and it was you know you could order food and you could you know have your drinks at your table and it was all very it's all very kind of posh it was a little bit like a very very posh working men's club um but it was really really nice and it was like it was quite glamorous and it was always you know, you always had to dress up to go. So it's like, like I said, during the 70s, I, I, I went there. So I did see quite a few people there. I saw Ken Dodd as well. Um, I'm just trying to think who I saw. I saw so many people there because my dad used to get free tickets. So we used to just get tickets and go and see anybody and everybody there, which was great fun. So, yeah, so that was, those were kind of my very, very, very early concerts, if you like. Uh, my first massive concert that I went to, wherein I went to an actual stadium to see somebody, would have been in about 1988 when I went to see The Cure. And I, or was it 87? No, it was 87 I went to see The Cure um, on the Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me tour. So yeah, that was awesome. So I, I think I kind of got better as I got older, really, because I was more able to kind of date date what I wanted to see so yeah anyway I'm, I'm rambling aren't I Lady Lecter also asked the second question which is if you were stranded on an island and could only take five items what would they be <sighs> well I would hope that I would get a mobile phone signal so I would take my mobile phone I know it's a kind of a bit of a cheat really but you know I'd I would take it because I like having a mobile phone because I'd be able to sort of film my adventures. I'd be able to send people messages to say, hi, you know, I'm still alive, you know, come and rescue me if you like. <laughs> so yeah, my mobile phone would be one. Uh, I just love it. You know, I just love my phone. I really do. I'd, I'm just such a geek really with it. So anyway, yeah, my phone is one. And uh, number two, I would take, I'd take a towel because towels are incredibly useful and uh, I'm always quite fond of the line from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy which is, uh, you know, he really knows where his towel is. It's a, you know, it's, it's a, you know, if you know where your towel is then you, you know, you can take on the world. So yes, I'd have a towel. Mainly because if I got wet, then I'd dry out. I'd be able to dry out. Um, and if I, you know, if I went for a swim in the sea or something, I could dry off. I could sunbathe on it, you know. Lots of things you can do with a towel. So, uh, yeah, what else would I have? I'd take my books because I love reading. So, you know, while I'm sitting on my desert island, underneath the sunshine you know I'd want something to do so short of you know having to do the you know survival stuff uh, you know I'd spend my spare time reading definitely so that's three things so number four comfy clothes I like my comforts I really do so I would take some comfy clothes with me preferably including a half decent pair of walking boots because you can't be without those um yeah so i'd have clothes i like my clothes not like you know i'm into you know high-end fashion or anything but i like comfy clothes so yeah i take comfy clothes and number five number five i take my boyfriend because he keeps telling me that he's a bit of a ray mears survivalist type I've yet to see, you know, firm evidence of this, but he seems to know what he's talking about. So yes, I'd take him along because he'd be incredibly useful. He'd be able to, you know, build a shelter and that sort of thing. You know, he's quite good at that sort of thing. So yeah, I, I reckon he, you know, he'd be worth having along for the for the ride, definitely. So yeah, those are the five things that I would take with me to a desert island. 
Kai Oliver asked, hi Kai, do you have any photos of your baby back days? Now, I've got photos, some photos of me from when I was younger. Unfortunately, what I tended to do was, I, I wrote a lot to people, I had a lot of pen friends, so I used to send out my best pictures to my pen friends. So, unfortunately, I've, I've kind of lost a few of them down the years. So I've got some photos, I say baby bat, I mean, in the 80s, when we were kind of growing up, it was just, it was just what we did, it was just how we looked, we, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't necessarily label ourselves anything particular. Um, we liked particular types of music, but there was never any kind of definitive labels. We didn't define ourselves a particular way. So we just wore what we liked wearing. So tube skirts and, you know, oversized shirts with, you know, large crucifixes or whatever on, you know, your sort of weird, weird and wonderful jewellery that we could find. You know, lots of bangles, you know, low bangles were a big thing. So yeah, so that was kind of earlier on, sort of during my teens. So then sort of my style did develop later on, um, in my 20s certainly. And I'll include some pictures. So here I am in, when I was about 14. As you can see, not very gothy at all. And when I was about 18, so a little bit more gothy. Black eyeliner was the big thing, definitely. And I'm about 20 here, and I've got my hair hennaed and in a bob because I'd had to take cut. And I'm 21 here, a bit more gothy. Well, I thought I was anyway. Sort of around about 22, my All About Eve t shirt on, my hair finally kind of blackish in colour. And yeah, here looking a bit more something like perhaps a bit red and black though. So my style kind of developed, I was very much into kind of the rock scene as well as the rock and metal scene, as well as the goth scene. So my style was a bit of a crossover of the two during those years. So during the sort of 90s, I was a bit of a crossover. Partly until that I, I moved away from home and then I kind of went all out. If I was going out, I went all out goth. So I was, you know, Proper, done up, everything. So again, I'll put photos in. Here I am in my student nurse's accommodation with my sister's a Mercy poster. And I'm about to go on a night out. The white lights, by the way, are not orbs. They are flashes off when I photograph the pit, photographs. So, yep, PVC mini skirt, silk shirt, back combed hair. In this one, I was wearing a... An old man's dressing gown which was really nice but I was in the kitchen you know yeah so again a bit more all-out goth ready to go to the club at Whitby Whitby goth weekend 97 I think that was something like that my sister's t-shirts on and here I am in the underground with my friend Hannah who has been a goth for a long time too and I'm here at the Dracula centenary in 97 I'm about uh, 27 there and 27 here when I got married to my ex-husband in my wedding dress and so uh, the photos aren't brilliant but you know I didn't have a very good camera in those days so you know they're just pictures and <laughs> snapshots yeah so so yeah so then my style kind of developed as I got a bit older I veered away from it for a few years because I was bringing up children and consequently feeling like I needed to kind of fit in a little bit. So I kind of went off the boil a bit. I mean, I used to wear a lot of band shirts and stuff when I was when I was in my 20s. Um, and certainly in my teens and my 20s, I wore a lot of band shirts with leggings and Doc Martens. That was kind of my staple wardrobe. Um, I don't tend to do so much the band t-shirts anymore. Uh, it's something I've been thinking about getting back into because I used to really love wearing band shirts because generally speaking, they're quite good quality. They cover a multitude of sins and, you know, they last forever. They literally last forever. All the ones that I had, I wore them till they fell to pieces, literally fell to bits, every single one of them. 
and you know I had some really good ones um, you know so I'll probably include some pictures of me with band shirts on as well um, various band shirts from you know various sorts of things I used to wear wear them all the time so I had quite a collection so yeah so I'll include some pictures of me with band shirts on as well yeah, I'm on a beach here with my Metallica t-shirt on because, as I said, I was into metal as well as sort of goth music. Sutherland Arms t-shirt, one of my favourite pubs, um, in actually America in this photograph. And Sisters of Mercy t-shirt, every goth has to have a Sisters of Mercy t-shirt. This is from Whitby, Whitby Goth Weekend. And my Susie t-shirt from when I went to see them um, in the 90s. This I was about 30 in this yeah. picture. I also sort of more recently obviously started to be a bit more gothified again which is it was about me rediscovering who I am in my 40s. Coming a bit more up to date I'm about 32 in this picture thereabouts and in this one I'm about 36 or so so you know ready for a night out looking the part really and the most modern picture has taken this year of me getting back to my gothiness. Because I think, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really call it a baby bat phase being when we were young. You know, it was just how, who we were. And obviously, as I've got older, then your own sense of personal style develops a bit more. So, well, I say that. You know, hey, I'm just in a black jumper and jeggings today, but you know, that's okay. It's comfy. I like comfy clothes. So yeah, so yeah, pictures of my baby back days, they've been included. Hope you've liked that. Thank you so much for asking those questions. If anybody has any more questions, I'll always do a part two. It's not a problem at all. And I'd like to say thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to do a video collaboration with Sarah Sin at some point, which so I'm hoping to do that soon. Um, yeah, I've got some other ideas of what what else I I would like to talk about because I'm interested in spirituality as well. I plan to do some kind of spiritual type videos as well because I think it's important to hear it from a different perspective. So I'll I'll be doing that. And yeah, so I would like to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Big thank you to Lady Lecter and Kai Oliver for the questions. Thanks for watching. Bye.